Hello everyone, welcome back to Administrative Office Procedures and Management and we are now in our week 9. So as usual, before we move on with our discussion, please have with you your modules so that you will have a guide in the discussion that we're going to have in this video. Okay, so I hope you have your modules with you. So our topic for this um, discussion is all about the management of the office environment. So ano nga bang office environment? Of course, it's the totality of the office wherein your employees are going to work. So ngayon, um, as I've said uh, dun sa mga previous videos natin, we ha when we start uh, discussing <laughs> or when we start with this subject, please make sure na yung mindset ninyo, kayo yung boss. Okay? Para nang sa ganun, ma maintindihan or makarelate kayo dito sa ating mga topics. So now, you're the boss. You are the manager. So syempre, or let's say, um, ikaw yung may-ari ng business. Ngayon, ang first or or before ka na mag um, hire ng mga empleyado mo, the first thing that you have to prepare is of course kung saan sila magtratrabaho. <clears throat> Dapat kapag ka nag hire ka na, um, pulido na yung working area nila. So ngayon, you as you as the owner of the business or as the manager na mag um, na mag hire, of course alam mo kung ano yung business. Tama? Ano yung nature ng business? Ano ba yung mga gagawin ng mga tao or ng mga empleyado na iha-hire mo? So, alam mo dapat lahat yun. Bakit? Bakit? Ito po yung bakit. It's because we have yung tinatawag natin na planning stage for the environment of your office. Ano ba yung mga bagay na dapat i-consider? Yan. Are you troubled with deciphering the exact needs required when planning and designing your office space? How do you distinguish what office furniture is needed? Which would suit your needs best? A desk, a desk, workstation, or a portable desk unit? Are you underestimating or overestimating the amount of space you will require? What is your working style? Do you have the tendency to spread out where you work? Do you like things out of sight? Are you more of a visual person? Are you currently juggling space for your computer and papers all in the same work area? How much lighting do you need to work more efficiently and effectively? <clears throat> What type of lighting do you prefer? How much space will be needed for sorti for sor for storing surplus supplies? Do you need invest in lateral or vertical file cabinet? How do you calculate further gro future growth and space needs when planning your office? Okay, so that is the planning stage. Ano yung sinasabi doon? You as a manager must know the nature, sabi ko nga kanina, must know the nature of the job that or of the work that is needed to be done in that particular um, office space kung saan ilalagay mo yung mga empleyado mo. Now, since alam mo kung ano yung nature ng trabaho na mangyayari doon, for example, let's say administrative work. This office is for administrative works. It dito yung mga administrative staffs. Dito sila magtratrabaho. Okay, so ano ba yung mga ginagawa nila? Of course, more on paperwork ang mga yan. Filing, storing of data, ayan, doing of reports. So, alam mo kung ano yung mga trabaho, right? Now, yun yung magiging basis mo kung ano yung mga klase ng furnitures na ilalagay, kung ano yung mga um, supplies na kakailanganin. So, since alam mo, ma-formulate mo kung ano-ano yung mga bagay na ilalagay mo in that particular working area. And as to pl the planning stage, ang kailangan mo lang is um, malaman nga kung ano yung mga kailangan. Kasi uh, may mga tao naman na, na kumbaga, pwede mong i-hire na sila na yung gagawa ng design. Okay? Kumbaga, ibibigay mo lang sa kanila yung mga requirements, ano yung mga kakailanganin, and then bahala na sila na mag-design ng working area. So that won't be a problem on your part. But, yun nga, kailangang alam mo kung ano yung mga kakailanganin doon. Para nang sa ganun, ibibigay mo na lang yung requirement mo doon sa magtratrabaho, um, mas maganda yung magiging outcome. Okay? Kasi, syempre, kapag kasasabihin mo lang doon sa magtratrabaho na bahala ka na, sige, gawin mo na lahat ng gusto mo. Bahala ka na, basta maganda, maayos. O, ba? Pagkatapos pala eh, hindi naman pala siya... Uh, hindi ka naman pala makakapagtrabaho doon kung ano yung gagawin mo. 
hindi naman pala ma- pwedeng dun magtrabaho yung mga empleyado kasi hindi appropriate yung design, yung mga furnitures, yung mga tables and chairs dun sa trabaho na kailangan nilang gawin. So, you as a manager or as the owner of the business must know yung mga kailangan nung mga magiging empleyado mo para dun sa magiging trabaho nila. Para nang sa ganun, pagkatapos ng layout, pagkatapos ng design, interior designing, um, um, kumbaga, appropriate yung magiging outcome dun sa magiging trabaho na kakailanganin gawin ng mga empleyado. Okay? So, um, ayan. And of course, how do you calculate future growth and space needs when planning your office? <clears throat> so, we should not, kumbaga, um, put an end. There should always be an open, ano eh, open ending kapag ka nagpilpano ka for growth. There should always be a room for growth dun sa... Kasi diba, bakit ka ba magpaput up ng company? Para dun, stagnant ka lang. Dun ka lang. Hindi, you, you put, a, put up a company or you put up a business or you put up, yeah, a business um, para mag-grow, diba? Yun yung pinaka-aim mo. To be able to grow that business that you're putting up. So, you have to make sure that there is always a room for growth dun sa working area na plinaplano mo. So, dapat kasali yun dun sa plano. Yung working growth or your future growth ng yung business or ng yung company. Okay? So, ayan. Planning for an office involve, involves many details, including these key concerns. Number one, spatial design and layout. Number two, electrical requirements. Number three, lighting and then ergonomics. So, first we move to a spatial design and layout. Establish, um, and sabi dun, special design. How do you use your space in critical I, how do you use your space is critical in determining how to structure the layout of your office. So, when setting up your office, consider these issues. Number one, we have established primary and secondary work areas for this task. We have paperwork, computer activities, and projects. <clears throat> When you say primary and secondary, hindi pwede na iisang area lang lahat gagawin ng mga yan. So, you should, all, you should have an area for paperwork. So you, have, you should have an area for computer activities. And then, you should have an area where, where you can make the project. Okay? Hindi pwedeng pagkumpulin mo yung tatlong yan sa iisang area kasi magiging magulo. Especially when you have this type of empleyado na kumbaga hindi sila nakakapagtrabaho kapag ka nakikita nilang stuck up ang paperwork na tratrabahuhin. Especially, for example, let's take for example yung modules ninyo. Kapag ba nakikita nyo yung modules ninyo na pagkadami-dami, nakakapag-isip pa kayo ng maayos para sumagot? Di ba, mas lalong wala kayong nagagawa. So, same is true in, in the working areas. Kapag ka nakikita ng mga trabahador mo na, ala, nakadaduti, stocks iti, kailangan ga- gawing mga paperworks, mas lalo silang hindi magiging productive. So, you have to make sure na merong area for paperworks. Doon nila stock lahat ng mga paperworks. And then, you have the area for computer activities. And then, of course, you have the area for the projects or where, where, where anyone is going to do the projects. Like, it, um, especially, for example, um, kapag ka it's an architectural ano, architecture business, di ba? Hindi pwedeng dun sa may paperwork ka magdraw-draw nung, nung design mo. Of course not. You have to have your own space wherein you can draw freely. Um, walang barriers, walang, um, ang tawag dito, obstructions na nakikita. Para nang sa ganun, inspired ka. Kasi di ba, maaliwalas ang ang ambience, maaliwalas din ang utak mo nagagawa. So, that is why you have to, um, when designing and making the layout of your um, office space, you have to be able to put or establish a primary and secondary work areas. Kung saan magkahiwalay ang working area for paperworks, magkahiwalay ang working area for computer activities, and of course, hiwalay din ang area for projects or where you are gonna do the projects. And then, number two, you have to plan for accessible file system. Action files, administrative files, client files, and project files. So, when you say accessible, dapat madali lang siyang um, kunin. For example, reports. Oh, okay, let's say for example, yung buying and selling of goods. Um, let's take Baile, for example. Si Baile, meron siyang mga suppliers. Meron siyang mga... Um, 
tawag dito, meron siyang mga empleyado. And then, meron din siyang mga customers. So, yun pa lang, yung tatlong yun pa lang, um, marami ng information na kailangang i-store about those, kumbaga, yung profile ng yung profile ng eh, ng supplier kailangan mo yon di ba just for in, um, instance na magkulangan ka ng stock kailangan mong tawagan si supplier madali mo lang bang ma-access yung profile niya or yung mga information na kailangan mo so you have to make sure that there is a system wherein madali mo lang siyang kunin yung mga information yung mga reports yung mga data na kailangan mo madali mo lang siyang makuha so dun pumapasok yung tinatawag natin na filing system usually ngayon ang ginagamit na is computer like di ba um, sa baile nga dun sa baile di ba meron silang uh, ang tawag dito yung, yung POS yung selling system yung kung saan sinuswipe lang yung binibili mo and then, di ba, automated yon na bawat bili mo, as long as meron kang suki card, nag-iipon yon ng points. And at the end of the year, nagkakaroon sila ng raffle or nagkakaroon sila ng prices para dun sa mga top-notch na, na nag, nag-grocery sa kanila. So, paano na gina, nila ginagawa yon? Because of the computerized system. Meron silang system na kung saan na store doon yung information na yan, yeah, nai-store doon, nasa-save doon yung information ng bawat customer. So, that is a very accessible um, way of filing. ba? Kasi nga, i-click mo lang doon, ano yung kailangan mo? Kailangan ko yung report nung, nung mga um, customers. Sino ang pinakamataas? Sino ang pinakamababa? So, um, you're just going to command the computer to to give you those information and gagawin yun ng computer. That is what we call uh, a filing system kung saan it's very accessible. So, you as a, a manager or as the owner of the business, you must be able to plan for an accessible file system before um, starting your business. Kasi nga, di ba, syempre, kailangan mo talaga kasi yung mga information. Yung mga profile ng empleyado mo, kailangan mo yun. So, paano mo siya i-store? Saan mo siya ilalagay? So, let's say you're, you're, you're on a service um sige, luwag na lang. Administrative office na lang din. Kapag ka nag, um, ano ka kasi, di ba, magpapasubmit ka ng resume, magpapasubmit ka ng mga credentials ng mga empleyado na, na i-hire mo. So, saan mo yun file It should be accessible. Dapat, kapag ka kinailangan mo ng reference, kinailangan mo ng, um, kinailangan mo ng, ng particular file, madali mo lang siyang kunin. So, yun yung sinasabi nila na accessible file system. And usually, as um, as of today, ano na, computerized na lahat, di ba? Kumbaga, sa computer mo na ini-store lahat. Pero it does not necessarily mean na kailangan computerized ka dahil sa computerized ang ano ngayon, world, computerized ka na rin lahat in toto, lahat-lahat computerized. Hindi naman, kailangan mo pa rin yung mga hard copies for backup. Okay? Next, you have to allocate space for storage of office supplies like utilities, pens, pencils, staples, tape, paper clips, scrubber bands, etc. Marketing materials, letterhead, envelopes, company literature, fax supplies, printer supplies, and copier supplies. Okay, so ano yung ibig sabihin nito? You have to be organized. Dapat merong organized area wherein you're going to, um, which is intended, which is intended for you to stock yung mga stocks mo ng supplies. Bakit? Of course, um, like for example, yung inks, yung, yung bond papers, hindi pwedeng magsama yan. Kasi just in case na matabig yung ink, matapon dun sa mga bond paper, o di nga nga, di ba, nagsayang ka ng bond paper. So that is why you have to be organized. Dapat may, may, kumbaga, may designated area per supply. And another thing is that, mas madali rin yun dun sa magiging inventory system kung saan kapag ka pumunta ka sa supplies o makikita mo nandito yung mga coupon bands ay wala na palang coupon bands or makikita mo nandito yung mga ball pens ay wala na palang ball pens tapos makikita mo yung paper clips ay hindi naman pala nagagamit yung paper clips so kita pa lang um, kumbaga love at first sight <laughs> dun sa first na pagkita mo pa lang ma- madidistinguish mo na kung ano yung kulang ano yung kailangan ano yung hindi naman masyadong kinakailangan so yun yung isang advantage ng organized na na um na pag-stock ng f- supply. And another is that maiiwasan mo yung nagkakaroon ng um, tawag, nawawala na supply, yung pala na ano mo lang, na misplace mo lang, kasi nga wala siyang proper na na um, area, wala siyang proper na pagtataguan. So, 
kung saan-saan mo na lang siya tinatago, tapos kapag kakinailangan mo, um, hindi mo na siya mahanap, bibili ka na naman ulit, eh, ang dami-dami mo, lang, mo pa lang stock, hindi mo lang siya mahanap, hindi mo lang alam kung saan mo siya nilagay. So, it's very important that you would be able to allocate the space for the storage of your office supplies. And then, after the spatial um, design and layout, let's move on to electrical requirements. Plan for these electrical needs. Outlets. So, ang dami yan. Outlets. Kung titignan ninyo, ang dami-daming outlets dyan sa inyong um, module. So, ano yung tinatawag nilang outlet? Yun po yung saksakan. Okay? Since ikaw na manager or ikaw na business owner, alam mo yung magiging or yung kakailanganin na na mga gadgets. Or for example, kailangan ninyo ng printer, kailangan ninyo ng photocopy machine, kailangan ninyo ng um, computers, kailangan ninyo ng electric fans, kailangan ninyo ng ref, just in case may kitchen yung office ninyo, kailangan ninyo ng coffee machine, etc., etc. Kailangan mayroon kang abundant na saksakan. Kasi, or outlets, kasi hindi pwede na maggamit, gumamit ka ng extensions, pagkadami-daming extensions, tapos saksak mo lahat doon, nas magkakaroon ng overloading. And then, sasabog yung extension. Nasira na yung extension mo, nasira pa yung mga gamit mo. Or worse, baka magkasunog pa. Magka-accidente, may makuryente pa. ba diba? So, you have to make sure that there is an outlet intended for each of the the machines, each of the things that needed to be um, plugged in. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng um, outlets. Next, you also have the telephone lines. Um, business lines, fax lines, dedicated data lines. So, when you say fo telephone lines, um, may mga business kasi hanggang ngayon na gumagamit pa rin talaga sila ng landline, yung telepono. We're in, um, kumbaga, nag nag uh, ano sila nag allocate sila ng mga different telephone lines for different um, purposes so for example ito business lines to or let's say this is for the customer service line so may mga ganon pwede din namang gawin yun sa mga phones if if um wala tayong telepono and then we need we have phones mag ano ka mag designate ka ng phone na para sa mga inquiries and kapag ka nag nag advertise ka yun yung ilalagay mo for inquiries please call Trevor Trevor ganon and then meron ka rin namang um um telephone number for for or cell phone number for your suppliers so for example may suppliers ka ayan o para nang sa ganon hindi nagkakahalo-halo yung mga um, transactions yun naman yung gamit kung bakit kailangan maayos din naman yung magiging telephone lines mo or let's say communication lines not just telephone lines okay so next you have lighting uh, there are three types of lighting dito ambient light task light and natural light. So, ano yung ambient light? Ito po yung bumbilya na nakakabit sa ceiling. That's your ambient light. And then, yung task light, usually, ito yung mga desk lamp. Okay? And then, yung natural light, of course, this is the sunlight. So, you have to make sure na um, abundant, hindi naman siya abundant, um, yeah, you have to make sure that maliwanag yung working area. Not unless siguro yung trabaho nyo is mag-grow ng mushrooms, syempre dapat yung working area ninyo madilim. Pero usually hindi naman ganon yung, di ba, hindi ganon yung setup. Kapag ka nagpatrabaho ka, make sure na yung, yung space kung saan sila magtratrabaho maliwanag. Number one is if you can use, if you can make yours of, of or if you can utilize the sun, yung natural light, ano mo, i-maximize mo kung kailangan na salamin lahat yung, yung paligid ng or mga bintana, ganyan. Um, yun na yung gamitin mo. Para nang sa ganun, makatipid ka rin sa kuryente. Like, yeah, you have to install yung, yung ambient light, yung mga bulbs na yan. You have to install it. But, but um, kung pwede naman, di ba, na yung natural light na lang ang gamitin, bakit kailangan pang i-switch on yung ilaw kapag ka maliwanag naman, right? So, nakatipid ka sa kuryente. So, ayan, kailangan dapat yan dun sa magiging plano. Next, ergonomics. What is ergonomics ba? Ergonomics is the science that seeks to adapt work or working condition to suit to the worker. The study of the problem or people adjusting to their environment. Hindi ko rin naintindihan. <laughs> Ang sabi, what is office works? An office is a room where professional duties and administrative work is carried out. The details of the work depend on the type of business that you are involved in. But will usually include using computers, communicating with others by telephone or fax, 
um, keeping records and files, etc. Features of an office such as people, space, equipment, furniture, and the environment must fit well for workers to feel healthy and comfortable and to be able to work efficiently and productively. This is where ergonomics come in. So ergonomics is a science or um, it's a study that seeks to adapt work or working conditions to suit suite the worker and study of problems or people adjusting to their environment. So ano yung gamit ng ergonomics? Um, paano mo, uh, yun, yung ergonomics is yung kumbaga, um, how will will they be able or, or ano yung mga ilalagay mo dun sa working area para nang sa ganun um, maka-adapt ng mabuti, maayos yung yung mga um, trabahador. For example, di ba, kapag ka ikaw, um, you're from a book, and then you're going to go to study dun sa, let's say, sa ibang bansa, para medyo mas ano. And then, iba yung kultura don, iba yung klima don, iba yung pagkain don. So, ano yung mangyayari sa'yo? Mahihirapan ka na mag-adapt, di ba? Especially that you do not see um, familiar faces. So, yung kumbaga, madedepress ka, di ba? Nakaka-depress pag ganun, wala kang makausap. Hindi mo makain yung pagkain kasi uh, ang, ano, iba yung iba yung taste nila dun sa taste na nakasanayan mo. Tapos, ang init dito sa Pilipinas, tapos dun sa pinuntahan mo na place, ang lamig-lamig, o di ba? Um, yung adaptivity, adaptivity, how you will be able to adapt in that um, particular environment Ano, ganon. So ganon din when 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 you invite workers or when you have employees na pupunta sa trabaho. Um, syempre, you have you as a manager must make sure na magiging easy or magiging smooth yung transition or yung pag-adapt ng mga workers mo dun sa working environment nila para nang sa ganun mas maging productive sila. Like they will you have to make sure that they will feel safe, that they will feel um healthy na, di ba, tulad nga nun kanina, lighting. You have to make sure that um, wala, walang reklamo sa lighting. Yung, yung hindi na makat- makapagtrabaho dun kasi ang dilim-dilim, o di ba? So, you have to make sure na um, healthy yung environment mo, na it will make them feel safe so that hindi sila lingon ng lingon kung ano yung pinagtititingin or parang palaging nakaabang, palaging naka, ang tawag dito, um, walls up, yung ganon, parang nakaabang palagi. Di ba nakaka-stress yun? So, aside from nakaka-stress yun, hindi pa sila makatrabaho ng mabuti. So, dun yung pumapasok yung ergonomics. Paano mo siya um, aaralin? Paano mo uh, of course, you have to to have um, tawag dito observation. Then you have to make an observation dun sa mga empleyado mo para nang sa ganon makita mo kung ano yung mga kailangan nila, ano yung mga dapat baguhin para nang sa ganon mas feel at ease sila na magtrabaho. Okay? So ayan. What are the vital concerns of ergonomics? So according to basahin na lang natin sa inyong module. According to ergonomist Sally Longyear, the following are things of importance to be aware of. Number one, are your eyes really tired at the end of the day? If so, you may need to adjust your display or lighting and to practice eye fitness training. Are your neck and shoulders often stiff and sore? If so, your chair height, display, or keyboard mouse may need adjusting. Check your reach distance and phone posture. Number three, do you feel pain or discomfort in your back while working in your computer? If so, you might need to adjust your backrest and posture. Do you feel tingling numbness or pain in your forearm, wrist, or hand? If so, your chair height or keyboard mouse may need adjusting. Also, check your sitting posture and wrist position. Are your legs, number five, are your legs often stiff and cramped? Or do you have swelling and numbness in your ankles and feet? If so, your chair height might need adjusting or you may need a foot rest. Do you feel exhausted at the end of the day? If so, assess your lifestyle habits or f- for possible contributing factors. Good ergonomics at home and micro breaks at work can improve your health and comfort 
on of the job if you answer yes to even one of the question your workstation and work habits need improvement if you answer no to all these questions on the test congratulations you are probably comfortable while working at your desk okay so this should be um you as a manager or as the business owner this should be the questions that you should ask yung mga empleyado mo na nagtratrabaho ng 8 hours a day dun sa office na yon so or hindi mo naman siya kailangan di ba na tanungin there are um body languages body signs body movements wherein it could indicate na ay masakit yung leg niya ay masakit yung paa niya ay hindi siya nakakapaglakad ng maayos masakit siguro yung likod di ba may mga tipong ganun so if those kapag ka nakita mo or you uh, observe na ganun ang nangyayari then you have to um make action take action you have to um um provide a solution dun sa mga um things na na-observe mo okay hindi pwede yung ano eh hindi pwede yung nakita mo okay na tapos na period nakita mo ni eh. you have to um yun nga ergonomics you have to um search for solutions we're in um ma kumbaga madidi burden di burden <laughs> kumbaga malalighten yung yung stress na 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 feel ng mga employees mo Okay, so I think that's it for this um, video. Uh, ang requirement in your in three to four paragraph, write an essay about the difference between the working area today from the working area of the past. Okay, so this is going to be an essay type. Um, please uh, handwritten. Madali lang yan. <laughs> so ayan. If you have any question, any clarification, or any suggestion, feel free to message me via Messenger. I'll, I'll try to answer as soon as I can. And of course, please make sure to gandahan naman ninyo yung mga sasabihin ninyo dun sa inyong magiging essay. Ha, wag naman yung nakakasakit ng ulo pagbasa, okay? So, ayan, I hope to see you in our next video. Thank you for watching and listening in this video. Good day and God bless.